like to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. The weeks just go by very quickly and this is the last day of September which is very hard to believe but as we look around us we see autumn <clears throat> coming very quickly. We see the color in the trees, we see God's creation in many different ways and I just want to praise God that uh, for the color that's around us and the different things that are taking place uh, for just how we see how awesome our God is. But I'd like to welcome you tonight to our midweek Bible study. As we think of tonight, as we think of this nation, I'd like to ask that you pray for this country as we go get closer and closer to Election Day and as we, as Christians, need to be continuing to be on our knees and praying for this country and for direction and guidance and all that we do and wisdom. You know, we think of the many things that are taking place throughout this country. And tonight our, our time in God's Word is going to be around revival because we hear so much about, boy, it's time for revival. It's time for revival. And uh, I just want to challenge you tonight with our, our Bible study, The Eye and Revival. But before our Bible study starts, as far as our time in God's Word, we'd like to take some time to uh, pray and to ask for prayer for, uh, boy, different things in our lives. I think of, again, our nation, our government, our federal, state, and local governments. Pray for those that uh, have had this virus and those that are um, parts of families that are dealing with this virus within their family. We hear so much still about it, and uh, we need to be praying for protection and guidance. I want to praise God for protection in the school systems that, uh, you know, many of our school systems are back in um, to having school, whether it be part-time or, or full-time, and many parents are sending their children to school, but we want to thank those that are in charge of schools, uh, from the administrators to the students to the teachers to the support staff, the, the many that are involved. And we just praise God for the protection that has been there for our children and our teenagers and our young adults, even at college. We need to be praying for those at college. I know many uh, parents have sent their children off to college and they've left maybe for the first time in their life and they're now young adults and, and uh, in their colleges they've been kind of quarantined to the college and not allowed to come home. So we need to be praying for them also. Please be praying for the Mount Carmel Church as we look to the Lord for wisdom and guidance as we uh, continue to move forward and look for His wisdom and what He would have for us. We'd like to reach out more into the community and reach out to those around within our church family. And with that, I would like to say if you don't have a church family or not part of a church, uh, we'd love to have you come to the Mount Carmel Church. We have a morning worship service starting at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. We have a, a Sunday evening service at 6 o'clock. And we also have a, a Youth 412 that meets on, uh, on Sundays at 6 o'clock. And that's for any youth from the grades of 6th grade through 12th grade. We'd love to have them come and be part of our youth group. It's called Youth 412. And we have a midweek Bible study on Wednesday nights starting at 7 o'clock, where we have a time in God's Word, and then we have a time of prayer. So we would like to invite you to any of those, or to all of them, and to be part of our, our church family. You know, that it's very important to be part of um, a church, to be part and to come together and fellowship together. But we would just ask for uh, you to consider that if you're not going to a church. But let's have a word of prayer tonight as we start our, our time together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, and dear Lord, we thank you for the time that we can have in your word. We ask for guidance and direction as we go through 
tonight and as we think uh, of how um, the many blessings that you give to each and every one of us. And dear Lord, how that each and every one of us are challenged by revival. Revival in this nation, the revival in this country. And dear Lord, help us as Christians, as Christ followers, to be praying for revival. And dear Lord, we think of our school systems tonight, dear Lord. We think of the many children that are going to school. Uh, we think of the teachers, administrators of these schools, the support staff, and boy, just the many people that it takes to uh, operate a, a school system. We pray for each and every one of them. We pray for continued protection. We thank you for the protection thus far. We think of throughout this United States, the different schools that have started or the, the different schools that are teaching from home. We just pray, dear Lord, for guidance and wisdom. We think of parents and guardians, dear Lord, as they have either sent their children off to school or are, are now having school at their homes, that you would guide them and lead them in each and every step, dear Lord. I know it becomes a stressful time in many parents' lives, but we ask, dear Lord, for your guidance. We also pray for our government, dear Lord. We think of this upcoming election and the importance of this election, dear Lord. We just pray for it. We pray as Christians that we would be doing our part and getting out to vote, but also, dear Lord, that we would be praying for this upcoming election. Uh, we know that you are in control, dear Lord, and help us to um, keep looking to you for guidance and direction. We think of our families, dear Lord, and as the world tries to tear families apart, I think of marriages and husbands and wives, dear Lord, as the world tries to tear people apart or try, tries to tear families apart, dear Lord, we ask it for guidance there. And dear Lord, we ask for strong Christian families to rise up. And dear Lord, we thank you for families, dear Lord, not only uh, moms and dads and, and children, dear Lord, but those within our families. And we thank you for the protection and guidance there. We pray for our Bible study tonight, dear Lord, as we uh, want to just tonight's uh, Bible study to be a challenge to us, as many are, but how that, you know, we hear a lot about revival. And uh, dear Lord, we pray for revival in this country. But we also need to think, dear Lord, in our own lives, where does revival really start? And help us to do that tonight. And we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to just say at this time, if uh, I, I apologize, I have some allergies and uh, they're kicking up on me tonight. And, and uh, I just pray that I have a clarity of voice. If I don't, I apologize for that. I'm uh, trying to uh, talk a little bit through a, a kind of a raspy voice and uh, sound a little bit different maybe than I normally do, but I have some allergies, so just be praying for the allergies because in a pastor that's, that's hard um, to present the gospel, not to present the gospel, but be able to speak clearly and uh, efficiently, and uh, so we'll be praying for that also as this week uh, transpires. Tonight I would like us to look at revival. You know, we hear the word revival a lot, and, uh, you know, I myself have said, what our country needs is a revival. And maybe you've heard somebody say alongside of you, you know, I'm praying for a revival in this country. Or maybe you yourself have thought, I'm, I'm, I wish there was a revival. Well, I want to look at the I in revival. You know, it only takes one. You know, it's popular for coaches and companies to tell players and employees and, and even in our families. We hear this, this same thing over and over again. There's no I in team. Everyone likes to be part of a team, whether it's our family, whether it's at work, whether it's in our churches, whether it's wherever it may be, especially on a, a sporting uh, team, a team like uh, football. There's no I in team, and we hear that many times. But tonight I want us to think for a few moments about revival in this country. Revival not only in this country, but revival in our communities that we live in, revival in our churches, revival in our families. And I, I really think it starts, and most importantly, revival in each one of us. You know, a couple questions I'd like us to start our Bible study off with tonight to think about, and i like us to think, and and many times these are thought questions that I even 
pose to myself. But can God use you or me as the spark for revival today? Think about that for a minute. Can God use you or me as the spark for revival today? You may be sitting there thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm getting too old for that, or I'm, I'm too young, or, or no one will ever listen to me. You know, have we allowed God to work in our lives? You know, we can have a revival right where we live. We can have a revival in the community that we live in. We can have a revival within our own family just by us starting. And how does that start? How does a revival start? You know, that's a, that's a good question. And as we think of that, I, I want us to kind of look at that tonight. And hopefully by the end of our Bible study, we'll, we'll have those two answered. You know, there may be no I in team. But there's definitely an I in revival. In fact, it's the most important letter in this important word. You know, we say the word revival and if we spell it out, there is an I there, but it's an important letter in this word. And here's why I is so important to revival. It's because people think revival just happens. They think God sends revival just kind of randomly, or, or it happens in another place, and then it spreads on. And then all of a sudden, one day, we discover that revival is happening where we live. And it's now happening, maybe, but among our families, or our church, or our community, or our nation. You know, many think that I figures into revival only if they join up with the revival that's already taken place. You know, they do not think a revival could begin with them. You know, in this world today, and, and in this nation, we hear a lot about needing a revival in our land, and I truly believe we do. You know, with this virus, I've heard many times that, that many believe that God is getting our attention again. And I, I truly believe that. God is getting our attention by things that are going on and things in the world today that we see. You know, many have also said that we need to pray for a revival. And I think that's important because prayer is important in each one of our lives. Prayer is important for each and every one of us. And we need, as Christians... To be praying for that revival. But the question I asked earlier is, how does it start? And maybe that was a wrong question to ask. Maybe I should have asked, where does it start? You know, if we want to grow spiritually, or the church that we attend, we want it to grow spiritually, or the community that we live in, we want to see it grow spiritually. It must start with each one of us. You know, we really can't wait around for someone else so we can jump on the bandwagon. You know, many times we do that, don't we? Something starts to happen or maybe something happens at our church and we get all excited about it, but it's already started. And so we kind of jump in and, and start to be part of that. Well, there's nothing the matter with that. But why can't we start it? You know, we do need to do it together. But it starts with each one of us as Christians. You know, tonight we want to look at the I and revival and how to initiate revival. And it really starts in our hearts. How do we initiate that in our hearts? I'd like to, to start our Bible study off with a little story. It's about a man named Peter Cartwright. You know, when Peter Cartwright died on this day in September 25th of way back in 1872, the frontier lost a colorful pastor or a preacher. You know, born in Virginia in 1785, just two years after the treaty ended the American Revolution, he was taken west to Kentucky. There he became a, became a, a very tough guy in a very rough county. And that county that he lived in was known as Rogue's Harbor because of its swarms of, of bad men. And his mother pleaded and prayed for him. And isn't that great that, that we have moms, we have people within our families that continue to pray for us? Well, she was praying for, her, for him. And her prayers won. In a camp meeting, 16-year-old Peter was convicted of his sin, sin and, need, and his need for a Savior. And he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. Well, within two years, he was a traveling preacher. 
bringing the gospel to the backwoods of, of this new nation. You know, his rough past and hardy constitution served him well because he faced floods, he faced thieves, he faced a lot of hunger, he faced some diseases. And everywhere he went, he met a challenge head on. You know, once Peter warned General Andrew Jackson, which was a future president of the United States, that he was headed to hell just as quickly as any other man if he did not repent. You know, Rowdy's often interrupted Peter's meetings or his, his tent services that he had, and Peter charged a group of Rowdy's in the dark one night yelling to, to them, Hear, hear! And he went after them, and officers and men take them. The troubles makers bolted in panic. He wasn't afraid to, to confront them. And such events like that gave him a name. Crowds flocked to hear him throughout Kentucky. He traveled into Tennessee and Illinois. Peter preached to hosts of men and women. Three hours, in fact, at a stretch. Several times a week he did that, and women wept, and strong men trembled. And through his ministry, 10,000 came to Christ in meetings that sometimes ran day and night. You know, Peter also, after they were saved, baptized many. He urged new converts to build meeting houses to meet a desperate need for preachers. He championed the creation of two Christian colleges. And wherever he went, he left behind religious books and tracts to convert and strengthen others. And the joy of soul winning compensated him for all the hardships that he had. It's a great story, isn't it, about a man that never gave up. He continued to, to push ahead no matter what was going on. And I want us to look at where revival begins and where revival leads. You know, let us look at the second reason first. And I want to use the word revived. In other words, being revived should lead to revival. You know, Peter Cartwright did not begin the Second Great Awakening in American history, but he played a major part in it. He was one of the first souls to be revived in the early days of the Awakening that spread to many states and lasted for decades. He became a very dynamic preacher. Peter Cartwright is an example of where personal revival leads from the heart of one, of, of one heart to the hearts of others. You know, if we look back through history, all the revivals have begun the same way with, with people examining their own selves and then conviction has taken place in their lives. Where does revival begin? Let's look at Psalms chapter 51. We'll be looking at several passages of Scripture tonight, but Psalms chapter 51. I would like to read that for you. In fact, Psalms 51 is entitled, A Prayer of Cleansing. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified, and thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thy desirous truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hid thy, hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. 
Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood gutlessness, O God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God. Thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. You know, this passage that we just read describes King David's cry for revival. And this took place just after his sinful affair that he had with Bathsheba. In fact, in verse 1, we see, Have mercy upon me, O God. Let's turn and look at some other uh, chapters and other verses in the book of Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms 139. Psalms chapter 139. And I want to read just a couple of verses, verse 23 and verse 24. <clears throat> Again, we see the psalmist here reaching out in this, this uh, Psalms chapter 139 is about the everlasting presence and power of God, how that He is with us each and every way, in each and every way and each and every day. The Psalms 20, 139 verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, David's words were from one searching for renewed righteousness. That is where revival begins. It begins in the heart. And it is how revival begins with the conviction of our sins and being willing to repent. Another verse that comes to mind is found in Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, where it says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 19 says, Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit in our lives as Christians. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to thrive, to live. You know, it does not have to be a conviction of sin as dark as King David's. It can be conviction of maybe an attitude. Maybe you haven't had the, the right attitude and we're, we're thinking about revival in this land and it starts with us, the I and revival. It starts with each and every one of us, but it could start right with our attitude, how our attitude is each and every day. It could be spiritual weaknesses that we have in our lives. God will never use me. Or I, I'm not important. God makes each and every one of us important. Or maybe some spiritual care, carelessness or moral carelessness. Or maybe a lifestyle of not being part of the body of Christ as Christians, as Christ followers, or the body of Christ <clears throat> that each and every one of us are part of, again, as Christ followers. Or maybe not looking at God's Word or having a personal time with Him. Or maybe it's holding on to a, an attitude of resentment in our lives, a resentment towards somebody. You know, all these things that I've just mentioned can come between us and who God wants us to be. It can come between us and revival. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Or maybe it's jealousy. You know, maybe in our lives we think of somebody that lives around us or maybe a family member that looks or appears to have more than we do. And we become jealous. Or maybe someone's done something wrong to us and we've held on to that unforgiveness in our lives. You know, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us about the condition of our heart, without obedience there will be no personal revival. Part of the Holy Spirit's ministry is to convict us and to guide us and to be with us. 
in John chapter 16 and verse 8. If you would turn there with me. John chapter 16 and verse 8. And it tells us this in verse 8. Jesus is speaking of His leaving and the coming of the Comforter. In verse 8 it says, And when He has come, He will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. So how does conviction get started in the heart? One way is by reading God's Word and asking the Lord to open our eyes as we read. You know, it's, it's by asking Him to, to open our hearts and lives to what He would have for us. Turn back with me to Psalms 119. We'll be looking at verse 18 of, of Psalms 119. It tells us, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You know, it's something as we, we think about that, you know, many times we go into things without having our eyes open. But we see the psalmist telling us in 119, verse 18, Open thou mine eyes. Lord, open my eyes for what you would have for me. We also see by praying, as David did, in Psalms chapter 139, in verse 23, where he again says, and this is a verse we used a little bit earlier, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. By praying and allowing God to speak to us. So we see that by opening our eyes, by praying, and sometimes it comes by God chastening us. In Hebrews chapter 12, and I would ask you to look there to, after the Bible study tonight or tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 13 verses 1 through verse 13. We see God's chastening. We can also find a lot in our lives by the counsel of others. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. says, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of the counselors, there is safety. You know, the challenge is not in receiving conviction. The challenge is submitting to it. Let me say that to you one more time. The challenge is not in receiving conviction. The challenge is submitting to it. You know, what is the condition of your heart today? Is it ripe for revival you know, there's no more important time in our history than right now for Christians to unite and be in prayer. There's no better time in this country than right now to start a revival in each and every one of our lives. There's no better time than right now to start a revival in our church. There's no better time than right now to start a revival in our communities. You know, revival should and can start in each one of us first. Are we willing to be standing strong for what we believe in to be true? And are we willing to do our part and join together with other Christians and unite together? The I in revival is you. Are you willing to be in prayer on how you can do your part? The challenge tonight for us is, what does that I look like in revival? Is your heart open for revival to start within you? And as it starts in you, it spreads to your family, it spreads to your spouse, it spreads to your children. And from your family, it spreads to others. And from others, it spreads to our local churches. And from our local churches, it spreads to the communities that we live in. From those communities that we live in, it spreads to the state that we live in and the the county that we live in, and from there it can spread to this country. But the eye in revival is you. I pray tonight that that has been a challenge. And I pray tonight, as we close in prayer together, that that eye becomes bold, and we take a new step in our life to start revival. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for uh, our time together. And dear Lord, as we look at the eye on revival, 
Dear Lord, I know as I was studying this week and thinking about revival and thinking about the eye and, and revival in my life, that I would be in prayer. That I would be also be willing to reach out to others, reach out to my family. And dear Lord, through my life, that I might show a change to others, that I might show that I'm different, but also be willing to pray. Dear Lord, I pray tonight if there's someone watching or listening that is not a, a Christ follower or a Christian, dear Lord, the first step in their life, the most important step in their life, will be to accept you as their Savior. And I pray, dear Lord, as that person may come to you tonight, and there is no better time than right now, that they would ask forgiveness of their sins, understanding what has been done on the cross through the shed blood of Jesus Christ for each and every one of us, and how that He offers the free gift of salvation, the free gift of eternity with Him. If we ask forgiveness of our sins and ask Him to come into our lives and to change our lives, Dear Lord, I pray for that person tonight that may have asked forgiveness of their sins and asked Jesus Christ to come into their lives. That their hearts are changed, their lives are changed, and their revival starts within them. I also pray for Christians, Christ followers tonight, dear Lord, that have been running away or have been thinking, boy, it would be great to have a revival in this country. It would be great to have a revival in in the church that I attend, it would be great to have a revival within my family. Dear Lord, help us to understand and realize that it starts with us. It starts with me. It starts with I in revival. And dear Lord, I thank you for the passages of Scripture that we looked at tonight in the book of Psalms and other passages that we looked at, dear Lord, that is a challenge to us. That as we draw closer to you, through looking at your word, through praying, through reaching out to others and allowing the Holy Spirit as Christians, Christ followers, to, to lead us and to guide us and to give us wisdom, dear Lord, that we would start to grow spiritually. And as we grow spiritually, dear Lord, and I, I pray for families tonight, as our families start to grow spiritually, others will grow spiritually. And there will start revival. I thank you for tonight. We thank you for this week, dear Lord. And as the weather has changed to some colder weather, dear Lord, we, we also have gotten some much-needed rain. We thank you for each and, every, each and every part of that. And as we see the leaves change, dear Lord, help us to continue to remember that you are in control and you are on the throne. And someday you will come back for each and every one of us as Christians. I pray that we're prepared for that and know you as our personal Savior. We thank you for this time together and we thank you for tonight. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to thank you for watching and listening tonight. I pray tonight's been a challenge as we think about or thought about the word revival. And as this time comes upon our election time, that there would be a revival to break out in this country. But it starts with the I and revival, which is each and every one of us. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening. And if you don't have a church family, if you're not part of a, a local church, we would invite you to come to the Mount Carmel Church. If you have questions about our church, don't hesitate to call. Our phone number is 277-4435. The area code is 814. Please call and uh, we'll return them return the call, or if you have a need or know somebody that has a need within this community, a need within your family, please don't hesitate to call, because we would like to reach out and to continue to reach out into this community and be the church as, as spelled out in God's Word what the church is all about. But the I Revival starts with you. Thank you for watching and listening. May God bless you.